Hello, this is Herman Astwijk, and this is the presentation about the concept and the requirements for the digital healthcare enterprise. The agenda is as follows. We're first going to talk about the evolution of the core of the digital healthcare enterprise, which is the archive and the image manager. We're going to then define exactly what this includes, and we're going to do it in a top-down approach. So we're going to look at the big picture first, and then zoom in on the, basically on the core of the enterprise. We will discuss the many requirements based on the definition of the core, and then we're going to discuss the vendor-neutral archiving requirements. As you will find out, one of the requirements of the core will be to be vendor-neutral, so that we simply can plug and play this component or other, uh, or other applications in without having to do any significant migrations or changes. There are different levels of vendor-neutral archiving. Apparently, there are different uh, requirements or different uh, understandings between the different vendors. So we're going to discuss the different levels of the vendor-neutral archiving, and we'll finish off with the conclusion. Now, let's first discuss a little bit about the evolution of the digital healthcare enterprise. One of the major shifts that we have seen over the past 10 to 15 years is a shift from a department to a pa patient-centric. I mean with that is that instead of um, having the information stored, archived, retrieved on the department level, now a physician or practitioner wants to use a patient ID and get all the information of that patient. Independent whether it's in stored in radiology, in cardiology, endoscopy, whether there's information in surgery, whether there are some notes, whether there are some lab results, or whatever it is. So we're shifting from a department to a patient-centric solution. For example, within a department, we might have a requisition number or an accession number that was often used to retrieve some of the information. That's not no longer sufficient. We now need to have patient IDs. And there's then also, together with that, a quest for patient identifiers that are unique. So we need to have MPI, Master Patient Indexes. And we also need to make sure that we have a global identifier, which can be achieved by using the PICS PDQ transactions that are defined by integrating the Healthcare Enterprise, or IHE. Another important requirement is to exchange that information from the electronic health records outside the enterprise. As a matter of fact, this is one of the meaningful use requirements that are required to use the electronic health records in a meaningful manner for the United States. Another evolution we see is that there's a need for a true standard. Not only on the document level that we do today, we can actually exchange documents between different enterprises, such as using the CCD or the CDA, but in addition, we also want to make sure that we have a data level standard so we can really query and access our enterprise systems and get the data that we want and that we need. One of the things we also see happening is there's a <coughs> emergence of middleware and the middleware might be used for t what we call tech morphing. Tech morphing is changing information in the header or in the metadata that uh, facilitates certain workflow or certain display or certain characteristics uh, within the systems that they connect to. Let me give you an example. Some systems, some pack systems, some viewers depend on certain information in the series description to enable certain hanging protocols at the workstation. Other system might actually require a different series description or a different body part description or different procedure codes. So it is not unusual that we need to do some what we call tag morphing, changing some of the information to make sure that the workflow is optimally supported in the subsequent systems. There's also an evolution that takes place that we have multiple gateways, typically used for border access. Let's say there is an enterprise system or there is a provider system that uh, will provide information for uh, particular patients to physicians. In many cases, that physician would then talk to a gateway, the border gateway, that will then provide certain information uh, to that physician. And then last but not least, you would see an emergence of what we call clouds. Cloud not only for computing, but also for storage solutions. 
And the cloud is nothing else than a virtualization of a stored solution. Basically, you give the information to the cloud. You don't know where the information is stored or archived. Uh, it could be um, multiple locations, as it typically will be. It could be mirrored. It could be actually duplicated close by as well. Um, so there's a performance uh, guarantee, and there's also a backup guarantee and the data integrity guarantee but what actually happens in the cloud is or the grid is kind of transparent um, the cloud will just make sure that you get the information back when you need it now let's talk a little bit about the architecture of a typical digital healthcare enterprise a typical digital healthcare enterprise has multiple components first of all it's the core the core this is the heart of the system and that's where the specialties and the departments reside. Um, that's where the imaging uh, archival and storage and providing the uh, imaging uh, viewing as well presides there. There's the uh, data management system. And of course, there is the authentication, authorization, digital signatures, and also the audit trail facility. So that's the core. That's the first component. That's the number one uh, important part. Without anything else, would not be able to to, uh, to function. Now the core itself will have uh, the second component will be input sources, and input sources could be modalities. For example, CTs, MRIs, it could be EKG equipment, anything that creates digital information that needs to be managed by your DHE. The third component will be the EDMS, the Electronic Document Management System. In many cases, there's still a lot of paper around. For example, uh, um, there could be a fax that is being sent in. There could be release forms that are being signed. Uh, a lot of documents sometimes in department is not quite paperless yet. A lot of documents still float around, and we want to include them all in our DHE system. So we want to manage those documents typically scan them in, identify them with a meta header, and then make sure we are properly identified, archived, and can be retrieved. The number four component are the peripherals. And the peripherals might be intelligent peripherals, such as supply, uh, uh, automatic supply machines. Um, it could also be bed equ uh, equipment that is uh, located next to the bedside, for example, to take vitals, uh, so intelligent monitors, EKG monitors, anything that creates data that needs to be part of the uh, of the management system that comes from the peripherals will come from the fourth component. And an important component is also the fifth component is be the clinical messaging and reporting. There's a lot to do about uh, critical results reporting. There's a lot to do about uh, discrepancy reporting. All this information needs to be managed and, <clears throat> and communicated back to physicians. In addition, there might be e-visits, uh, e-prescribing. There are uh, actually reminders that might go out to not only physicians, but also to patients. That all has to do with the clinical messaging and reporting. And then typically hospital has also many external interfaces. For example, if a lab test has been sent out, we want to have the results back in an automated, automated and a standard format. So external interfaces, they might actually typically go via an interface engine to do some of the mapping on the different tests, in particular for laboratories, but that's where they also come in. Then we have portals. A portal is a um, and an entry for a clinician, for a nurse, for a patient to get access to the information of the DHC. And then there is also standard connections uh, to billing and uh, to providers, uh, all in a standard way to make sure that the proper billing happens. As, you, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to take a top-down approach. So now we're going to look a little bit more in detail in the core component, which is the heart of the DHC system. The core component, in, if you look a little bit more closely, we see actually two different groupings or two dimensions. First of all, there are the specialties and second, the departments. Typically, the departments serve specialties. An example of some of the specialties are the intensive care unit, the OR, um, radiation therapy, oncology, the emergency department, 
uh, liberal delivery will be a good example, as well as psychiatry or endoscopy, or many others. So these are specialties that focus on one specific clinical, such as lab labor and delivery, one particular clinical condition. Then the departments, such as radiology, cardiology, laboratory, pharmacy, and then the blood bank and dietary systems and housekeeping, as well as speech pathology, dentistry, these departments serve those specialties. For example, in intensive care unit, there might be a a radiology exam taken that is performed by radiology department then the lab might come in um, uh, to do some lab test and then the blood bank might deliver some uh, some blood and also dietary systems and housekeeping need make sure that they, they manage the beds there and get proper nutrition and so on so we have the specialties and the departments and they both interface with the core archiving and image management particular for the PAX system the second component in the heart, or in the core, will be the Clinical Data Management System, or CDMS. The CDMS has multiple components. First of all, it's the heart, it's the source, it's the enterprise archive for all the data that is accumulated and has to be made available. And that includes the images, the waveforms, the documents, whatever you can imagine. Anything that has to be uh, available for taking care of the patient. Then there are the databases and image managers, the repositories, that basically uh, has the indexes for all the archives and all the other systems. Most institutions have, in addition to the archive, also a data warehouse. A data warehouse is nothing else than a duplication of the data, not all of the data, but some of the critical data. And the data will be tagged, potentially, right? and it will allow for data mining and modeling. Just as an example, if an image would be stored in the archive, we would not put that whole image in the data warehouse, but we might put certain information from the metadata of that image in the warehouse, in the data warehouse, such as the, the date of the exam, what kind of exam, what the operator was, and whatever is important to be used for data mining and data analysis later on. So the data warehouse is actually the source for many of the intelligent systems.